In Laboratory 10, we're exploring the colors of light. We're exploring the fact that your computer screen has only red, green, and blue phosphors. Your mobile phone, your computer, your laptop, and tablet can only produce red, green, and blue. And yet, somehow, the red, the green, and the blue can produce orange and yellow, and all the colors of the rainbow can be found uh, and can be produced by red, green, and blue. So this laboratory looks at how that is possible, how the red, green, and blue are produced by the mobile phone screen or laptop screen or whatever you're using. In this lab, we're working in uh, chapter 10, uh, this is our textbook here, and uh, just scroll down to uh, chapter 10. There's our rainbow, and our lab will be exploring the primary colors of light, the secondary colors of light, and how the, those colors are produced. We'll be actually briefly looking at three systems, the RGB red, green, blue color specification, HSL, Q saturation, luminosity, and X11. But we'll be starting off with the RGB, the math that's underneath, the numbers that are underneath the colors of light, those that drive the colors of light. Math again, driving things. What we can't see is that if we could magnify our screen, we'd see it's actually made up of little red phosphors, green phosphors, and blue phosphors, as seen here under a microscope. In this lab, you'll learn to issue commands to each of the phosphors, the red ones, the green ones, and the blue ones, to tell them whether to turn on, off, and how much to turn on and off, full on, half on. Now, we will have to send numbers to the screen to tell it what to do with its phosphors. And the numbers we send will happen to be in base 16. Computers work in base 16. The problem is that in base 10, we have no numbers for the base 16 numbers 10 through 16. So, we'll use the letters A, B, C, D, E, and F. With that in mind, then, 0 will mean turn that light off. 8 will mean turn it on halfway. And F will mean turn that light all the way on. So, if we'll be able to send a number to the red lights, a number to the green lights, and a number to the blue lights. That makes three numbers. We'll work with a three number system today. But that will let us send three numbers to the system. And the way we'll send those numbers to our screen will be to use a really simple computer language. So this lab is actually also focused on the computer information system majors who happen to take the course. Um, a little bit of a, a underpinning to the work they do and when they learn to do some web pages. I'm using a site that will be linked below to, to make it simple and easy to do this. And the easiest thing to do is to simply select the code. I'm simply dragging my finger so I can make sure I get it right because if you type anything wrong, it won't work. And what I'll be using is a site that's, as I say, we'll uh, pull it up from here. We'll be using a site that lets us display the code directly. Uh, here in this editor window up here, I'll go ahead and delete that out. Long press, paste, there's my new code. And you can see it just turned to the area below, just went red. That's because of this code right here, this FOO code. That's what's doing it. There's the three numbers. That's F00. What that F00 is doing is telling the red lights to turn on full. F is 15. That's full. Full on. The zero tells the green lights to turn off. And the second zero tells the blue lights to turn off. So naturally we see red. Let me show you how this works. All I have to do is I'll delete that 
add another zero, and I've turned off the red, the green, and the blue lights. <laughs> now I have black. Now let me turn on just the green lights. I'll go ahead and put an F in to turn the green lights all the way on. That's green all the way on. If I only want to turn them on halfway, I can put an 8 in. 8 is halfway. So I can individually control the lights from this little piece of code right up here. RGB, that's the order. So the third number is blue, and the blue is all the way on. That gets you red, green, and blue, but how do you get the other colors? And that's really the focus of this laboratory today. I'll be asking you to use that editor to explore the following numbers. What color is this? We saw that's black. We saw the second one is blue. Keep exploring. And then, after you've explored these first few questions, you should be able to figure out what makes yellow, what makes purple. Magenta, you'll see magenta uh, as a pinkish purple. You'll probably get that pretty early on, but how do you get back to purple, purple? And a couple tougher questions, what makes orange, what makes brown, and can you make your favorite color in RGB? So computers use RGB. Our brains don't work well in RGB. It's hard to imagine what does make yellow. So in the textbook, there's a couple other ways covered that also relate to the CIS majors because they allow us to produce color on a computer screen. There is another color system available for science and computers called hue, saturation, and luminosity. And this system works with a color circle that starts with red at the top at zero degrees, green at 120, and blue at 240 degrees. We will tell the computer what color angle we want, which will tell us a color, and we'll tell it how much color to put in, that's the saturation, how much color, and how bright to make it, the luminosity. I think this will make more sense if you actually look at the HSL hues here we're looking at an angle of zero. The first number is the angle, the second number is the saturation, and the third number is the luminosity in each of these sets. As you move down, what's increasing is the luminosity. So the angle is still zero. These are all at zero. And the saturation is only 20%. Zero is red, so 20% red. And what's happening is it's getting brighter as we move down. Moving across, what's increasing is the second number. The, lum the saturation, this second number is increasing in here. That's the saturation. So here I'm at 100% saturation and 50% luminosity. Red, red. If I keep increasing the luminosity past 50%, it starts to wash out, even though my saturation is still 100% red. By the time I get to 100% uh, luminosity, I will have reached white down here. So at 100%, you reach white. And uh, conversely, down at 0%, you're simply at black, no matter what the color angle is. But these are all set with no saturation, so you get the grays and the blacks and the whites. Now let's have a look at this or as we go around that color wheel. We start at zero and head off to 15 degrees where we see red-orange. By 30 degrees, we've hit orange, but look what else is at 30 degrees. Brown. Brown and orange are the same color angle, just different levels of saturation and luminosity. That's why orange and brown work so well together. They're actually the same color. Now we continue on around through 45 degrees. At 60 degrees, we pass through yellow. 75, 90, 105, and at 120 degrees, we hit the greens. Here, the green phosphors are on, and they're on by different amounts according to the saturation and luminosity settings. We continue on around. We reach at halfway around the circle, that secondary color between green and blue, cyan. This is cyan right there. This is the cyan color. Cyan is 
and color close to a turquoise or aquamarine color. Continuing on from cyan, we come through 210, 225 to 240 degrees, where we hit the blues, pure blue at 240, 150 in this system. Continuing on around, we are now into the purples. Here at about 270 degrees, we hit purple, around 270. Continuing on around, we get to one of those other secondary colors that you'll find in the RGB section when you explore that part of the lab. You'll find up here at 300 degrees, we've come through magenta. Right at 300, that's magenta, also known as fuchsia. 315 takes us into pinks and 330 into the hot pinks and then back around into the reds till we reach 100, 360 degrees where we're back to red. These can be used in computer code. These are can be used in HTML code as well as in other programs. And these are some of the codes but against a white background so you can see them on a white background. The way they get put into a code looks like this, right here, this line. That's how you enter them into the, into that particular, uh, you can copy and paste this right into that same tool we were just using. I would be remiss if I didn't note, for those of you who are CIS majors, there is a new variation on it called HSLA, where A stands for alpha. Alpha allows you to have one color on top of another color or on top of a picture. Here you can see uh, the brown layer there, the brown deck, is transparent, and you can see the picture through the color. That's made possible by HLS, HSLA, and that's a, a standard in the, uh, uh, a new standard, fairly new, not, not brand new, but a newer standard in the... Uh, well, then they look like this. That's an HLSA command. And they can be plugged right into the code, just like you see there. But notice the A and the end of the HSL. And last but certainly not least, there are X11 color names. They can also be used uh, for in, in, your, in the BioCS major in their code. They include the basic colors of red, yellow. But there's actually 147 colors that um, HTML the hypertext markup language recognizes. These are all 147. Links to, uh, links to the textbook in this chapter will be, uh, will be down below. And so you'll be able to um, explore this on your own if you wish. But your focus, uh, if you're working on, on this at home, your focus, um, or in the lab, you'd be the one. Your focus will be uh, just a, what to answer these particular questions. What do you get when you explore these particular combinations? Our goal here is to just begin to explore the colors of light and how they make all the colors we see on the screens that we spend so much time staring at. What's underneath that world of color? and uh, how do you make different colors on a screen. It's the math and the numbers that are underneath the colors. The math and the numbers that give us the colors. One of the other things uh, uh, to bear in mind is the camera that you have on your phone or your computer cannot actually detect all the different frequencies of light. Every color is a different frequency. And so there are some frequencies that the camera actually doesn't see well. And you'll run into this when you take photographs of certain flowers or some other things where the colors you get back don't reflect what you saw with your eye. The human eye and the digital camera chip respond slightly differently to frequencies. And so you don't always get the true color from your camera. That's one of the uh, challenges. Uh, that photographers have. They might see something with their eye, but when they try to capture it with their camera, the camera doesn't capture what they saw. So with that, we'll engage in a little exploration. Find out the answers to these questions. Explore a little bit. See, see what you can do with these RGB 
hexadecimal numbers.